Well, looks like you made some pretty influential friends out west. That's good. Hopefully you learn from them. Cause you'll need every favor and trick you can muster up for this next doozy. Six thousand miles of iron rail. Hooey! <laughs> That's what's going to have to be laid to reach across Canada. Raising the money in the east is just the beginning to completing this Canadian transcontinental. You'll need to keep your crew supplied and on track as the wilderness of Canada will challenge your every step. Your goal is to see a train pulling up to the shipyard in Vancouver. Good luck, and bring your long johns. Hey, this is Joe, and today we'll be taking a look at the scenario for Railroad Tycoon 2 called The Great Divide. And as the intro made it kind of clear, we have to link up Canada from east to west. Our first start off will be connecting two smaller cities, Toronto and Montreal seems to be the ideal choice for that connection, and they also have uh, plenty of passengers to go back and forth. After building a little bit of rail and uh, train stations, we realize we don't have that much money, so we'll go into the paperwork and uh, create money out of thin hair. And then a group of concerned Quebec citizens offer us cheaper railroad building for 200k which we'll take up onto the offer then we we'll open up a robin hood account and uh, see that we are deep in the margin so that is exactly how we want to play we spot him link it up between toronto and montreal with a big station trying to capture everything create a train between both station a uh, three passenger dining car seems to be a money maker in this title so that's what we're gonna run between both cities and now I think it might be time to come out clean to you. Uh, you see this startup introduction, um, looking around, see what can be exploited, where we can go with the rail stations and everything. But it doesn't really make much sense because when I started recording the actual gameplay for you'll be witnessing for the rest of the game, I did not consider the, the, the moment to be recordable at the start, so I did not start recording before I, I was a couple of times connected. So I just kind of made a fakery here, re recording the start, and um, here is actually where uh, we'll start until the end. So we got a connection between Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, and Quebec, and we have a couple of little trains running around uh, delivering passengers. We got a, a couple of little stations uh, that are out in the wilderness for bringing in logs to Montreal to transform it into lumber and pulpwood into Ottawa where we have a paper mill and then we just send these goods to other cities. Now here you can witness me trying to lay down another train station to grab that little logging station. But as you can see the 50k and 100k stations are not able to reach it. Uh, ideally you'd want to build a 200k station but I tried to do something little fishy with the small station. And then I realized it would cost me even more just trying to link it up. So I just put down a big station and uh, be done with that <laughs> little uh, intersection here anyway just be to carry out logs and both wood out of that place to generate paper and lumber at another location in this case here we'll be going from the quebec crossing to quebec uh, where we'll be bringing in the logs and the pulp wood and then take the lumber and the paper and go to montreal to drop everything and from montreal we'll be including a couple of uh trains to bring back to the quebec crossing because the advantage of the largest station of quebec crossing is that we actually have a couple of houses connected to the station which makes it possible to bring in goods uh, and and make a little bit of money so our company has been doing generally well for now so we can start figuring out how to expand a little bit with upcoming boom times, it's a great moment to open up the Robin Hood account and keep buying more and more shares. We're going really deep in the margin now. Any margin call, it's all over. Once that's done, we go into track laying mode and start leaving east from Quebec and going around the more mountainous regions because we don't want any grade on a railway. We want to keep it as uh, straight as possible super straight railway that's what we're looking for 
So sadly, trying to cut over the small Appalachian part of Quebec uh, proves to be too difficult. So the only logical thing we can really do at this point to avoid going through gigantic uh, grades for railroad will be to go throughout uh, around the entire coast of the St. Lawrence River into the Gulf of St. Lawrence and back into uh, New Brunswick and then following the coast all the way down to our final destination of Halifax. Because remember, right, the mission is to actually connect Halifax to Vancouver and to transport some goods from the east to the west. Once we connect Halifax to the rest of the network, we plop down a small train station and we start sending some passenger trains from Halifax to Toronto. And now we got some good stuff because we got a port here generating passengers and we also have a very similar port generating passenger in Toronto. So that means that our train will be able to run three passenger cars and a dining car between both location without stop generating good amount of money because there's a lot of passenger generated at both stations. And now that our train between Halifax and Toronto is running, we will start a brand new train. Uh, this one will have a very specific objective. We don't want it quite yet to reach its final destination. We'll launch from Halifax with a full six passenger car loaded on and go toward North Bay. Now it seems weird, why would I want to bring passenger from Halifax, a full load of six cars to North Bay, while there's basically no demand for so many passenger in North Bay? The answer is actually quite logical when you think about it. Uh, once the train start leaving, the station will go down through the train and we'll just try to keep expanding the network of rails we have going westward so we can upgrade and further that 8th train full of passenger until we finally get it to reach Vancouver because that's the mission to bring six loads of goods from Halifax to Vancouver now thinking about it I, I I figured out I should maybe have brought another dozen of these trains and I'd be rich at this point just doing uh, like dozen of trains one way from Halifax to Vancouver and I will have paid back everything I was spent, but that is probably a, uh, a tactic I should be using later on. Our first big upgrade here will be a small modification of the network because right now if I want to go from the Quebec uh, to Ottawa, the northern side of Ottawa toward Northern Bay, uh, I'd have to go through Montreal and then out through Ottawa. But with a small modification I'm bringing on the map right now, uh, it will allow me to take a train and bypass that congested part of the network between Toronto, Montreal and Ottawa. Uh, it's a very busy triangle of trains going through that region, so if we can avoid it and uh, save a lot of time, uh, that will be the best case scenario. So that's exactly what I'm doing, just redesigning a bit the rails so we can have a, a decent amount of flow uh, from one location to the other and keep connected everything that was connected between North Bay, Ottawa for the, the logging camp and the small logging camp right there in uh, Western Quebec also. I uh, want to keep it connected and localized on the same network. And then I just put some finishing touches around the, the region of Northern Montreal to make sure that any train that want to use that path doesn't have to do too much of uh, gymnastics to get around uh, trying to block all the, the rails and everything. Once that is completed, we'll work on to our next expansion. It will be starting from North Bay, moving westward towards Sudbury. Uh, this will be the next objective. It's a larger town. It also has a port. I'm sorry, not at, not at uh, Sudbury, but at Sault Ste. Marie. It has a uh, passenger port there available too, so we'll be able to run some regular lines on that uh, intersection. And it's also going westward, which is exactly what we need to do for the mission. We now do a quick update for Halifax train. Go, go to So St. Mary, as well as uh, we just launched a brand new train going So St. Mary to, I believe, Montreal. I don't remember the recording. I'm surveying the land a bit to see what will be the ideal passage. And it seems true, Prince George really. Uh, will be the easiest way to cross the, the Rockies unless we go down in the States but you know I don't feel like going down in the States so we'll, we'll keep it um, 
Canadian 100% uh, across the Rockies and everything. Now our network definitely start looking kind of convoluted, but it's all right. We we got everything in place uh, for the best business practices of generating cash flow as well as getting that a train from Halifax to Vancouver with a full load in it. But really now the only logical thing is to keep going on with the expansion. We have the funds available. Uh, our train is on the way. We want to be as careful as possible to make sure it does not reach its destination. And we just got a magnetic newspaper that says that we are now 20% cheaper to build railroad tracks. So we will take action and start building some railroad tracks. Boy. So we hurry up and start building some rail around Lake Superior. Uh, this will allow us to connect from Sault Ste. Marie to uh, Thunder Bay at the other end. And while on the way to Thunder Bay, we're building around the coast, but we will also get a chance to connect to an Ironman on the path there. So that's all good, right? And now, of course, as I'm progressing, I just don't have enough money to complete the track. So it'll stay like that for now. But don't worry, as soon as we can, we'll do connection to Thunder Bay and start running some trains. And there we go. A couple of deliveries later, we can actually uh, extend our railroad network all the way to Thunder Bay to connect it to the rest of our network. This completes like one of the major part of our rail network. Uh, going through the Canadian Shield was one of the largest difficulty to complete because once we're past Thunder Bay, we're pretty much reaching the start of the prairie. So we got a lot of flat land with not many trees and will be very easy to develop the rail network from that point on forward. So that is really nice to see coming up all together in a single uh, spirit bond. So now we just plopped down a station in uh, Thunder Bay and I sent my train there, but I made a mistake. The next station is to Halifax. So our train without me noticing at that point is turning back toward Halifax, just ravaging every single little bonus I've done. But to generate more money, we do run more trains from that Thunder Bay Junction into Quebec and we'll probably just put some passenger and mail half load on both destinations just to get some money going around. But we also have some raw resources in Thunder Bay Junction, so we'll get some log train as well as some coal trains and run them to Quebec and Ottawa. And from these locations, we'll bring back some grain that is available in Ottawa to feed or cattle farm in Thunder Bay Junction or, or bakery. I don't remember. I think it's a bakery, yeah. And our or complex train network is just working like a real machine. And this is the point I start liking about this game. You know, when you, you start off first, you got one small train, you gotta maximize what you're gonna do with it. But once the network start expanding, you start getting five, 10, 15, 50 trains. It just start rolling out, rolling out faster and faster. It's just a development story that never stops. And this is what I love about Tycoon games. And this is something that Roller, not Roller Coaster Tycoon, this is Railroad Tycoon 2 as going for itself very well once you start snowballing you're becoming a real avalanche so with that in mind we will work on our next section leaving thunder bay i decided that uh, the the winnipeg lake uh, will go through the north now i understand it might be ideal to go to winnipeg proper and get the passenger train there and everything but you know, I, I felt like uh, going to Kenora and then whatever's the city north of uh, Winnipeg seems to be a better decision because we, when we survived earlier, we decided that Prince George Pass was the proper way to go into through the Rockies and south to the Vancouver port town. Uh, so definitely going through the northern part of the lake seems to be a defined good way to do it. The ones the station in Kenora is set up and rain trains start raining from, we're moving to the path. Uh, the path 7 gives us 100k for connecting them, so that's another incentive that we're getting to go to the northern uh, of Lake Winnipeg. 
and we just gonna you know slam it right in and go all the way to the other prince Principality that is on our path toward the Rockies. We just start running some logs from the past to Kenora because there's a lumber mill in Kenora. Uh, you know, just general making money tactics here. And now, or great endeavor continues. We're going from the past to Prince Albert. Uh, this is a very straightforward part of the network. Both towns are very close together. So it's just a question of uh, deciding if you go north or south of that uh, grain consuming factory uh, and put down a large station so we get as many of the um, natural resources that are available in Prince Albert. Uh, once that is done, we keep looking forward to the future and we see that uh, we're, we'll need to move a bit more north toward the Prince George Pass. So I launch a rail from Prince Albert uh, going north, just scooping in that little grain farm because it's on the way and it's free money to transport grain in this game. And we just keep plowing down the rail until we reach a mountain. Now money is good, rail network expansion is good. So we just run little trains uh, from factories we're buying to start generating a little bit more of income. Uh, one of these income strategy we'll be using is to get the iron from that iron mine from earlier, bring it to Thunders Bay port, which ch changes iron to steel and then transport that steel elsewhere, wherever uh, we're being paid for it. And we got a good steady stream of income right now and we'll be able to move from a mountain to the west. And now we're really getting into the Rockies at this point. So we'll try to build uh, more intelligently as possible. The more intelligently, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the Prince George Pass will be quite a challenge because of the inclination on both sides. Even though it's not the peak of the mountain range, it's still part of the mountain range and we do have to do a little bit of uh, finicking around to be able to get right in there. But before we blow all our cash into doing that, I think it will be best to just start expanding a little bit more the localities between the Quebec Toronto corridor to make sure that the rail network there is solid and not too congested by the amount of new trains that are bringing in fresh resources from the west into the populous centers uh, where they will be changing to more refined goods for sales to make more money. So just adding more dually tracks uh, will definitely help us out right now, especially considering our train that went back to Halifax is now coming back. I just didn't put a recording in it, but uh, it, it's on its way now. So as we're approaching the Prince George Pass, uh, the, the last slam down to Vancouver will be quite easy, so we need to make sure there's a clear path for a train to be able to reach its destination before uh, the end time. So now we got a pop-up saying that rapid expansion has exceeded what the suppliers can actually give us in resources, so rather than just, you know, start looking for new suppliers, we'll just slow down construction so we can, uh, we will pay more for the construction but at least uh, we'll get good quality railroad and with that in mind we'll finally go and tackle Prince George Pass and as you can see it can be quite hard to get the, the perfect little angle going to make sure that we're slamming it in the best accurate most efficient method of lowest grade possible for rain preliminary railroad network whatever that means uh, so by activating the grid, it's actually a little bit easier to see where we're heading with the rail network. Uh, so just trying to manipulate our way around the mountain to reduce the high grade numbers as much as possible and just try and slam it through the little hole we have, the little bit of room we still have between Prince George and Edmonton will be filled with a beautiful train track. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that what everybody wants? A uh, big beautiful train driving right by your mountain house. Oh yeah, and that will be perfect. One thing that kind of sucks in this game is that there's no tunnels. You know, when they, they went through the Rockies, it was all about building these tunnels. But in this game, we don't. We just 
we just have bridges uh, so we gotta make do with what we have and uh, fix trouble and uh, anyway we were able to reach Prince George which means most of the problem we were facing up now have been solved we've crossed like 90% of the country the Great Divide is finished now and was really a very quick fast stretch going from so St. Marie to Prince George feels like it took what five minutes that's probably because the video it actually took five minutes and now we can finally take a beautiful look at Vancouver look at that a small port city in a beautiful tranquil bay mmm we gotta slam a railroad right in there baby they won't even know what's ramming them from behind <laughs> anyway still have for a mission because as I mentioned earlier the objective is of course to bring goods from Halifax to Vancouver and that definitely I have no doubt will be completed within the next 20 in-game years uh, there's just no way we won't be able to do it what will be more difficult is to actually get a valuation of our company to go up and up because the actual game ask us to bring these six wagons over there but also ask us to have either a value of 20 millions or a value of 50 millions before the game ends and now that we're getting even more money from all these extra train tracks we're building we'll now be able to do a last stretch from Prince George to Vancouver uh, we'll try to get as always the best grade possible for rail or uh, so going down through that little valley, curving around, getting to Vancouver, uh, we are able to save a lot of uh, little troublesome scraping going on in that story. But we have we're facing a large problem here because Vancouver is down underneath the mountains, and we're in a valley, but we're on the top of the mountains. So what strategy can we use to solve that problem? It's actually pretty straightforward, we'll just build a station upstairs, you know? We can build it in the mountain and we'll deserve the region because it's the game does not consider height as a uh, problematic. So just aligning the station at the proper place, putting the rail network in the right way, and we can reach the ports and the city and uh, everybody's happy to climb the mountain to take the train. Because seriously, if you look at that, what's the point of bringing a train up in the mountain there? Especially if you just want to move goods around. Not a great insight, right? And now that our connection is completed, we will just do the last rail bit. And Canadian Pacific links east and west coast. So step one is completed. Now we need to ram that train full of passengers from Halifax into Vancouver. Now we go into the train and we update the destination from Prince George to Vancouver with the sixth passenger. Now we will go back to the train heading to Vancouver already and replace the locomotive for something that actually moves more than a 2-4 Vulcan. And then we just have to sit patiently and wait for the train to cross the whole country. It is at Quebec right now but will pick up steam and start moving faster until it reaches the west coast and since we have nothing else to do we just start buying every business we can with the money we're wrecking and from all the transportation we're doing now our good friend the train is already at Sault St. Mary almost uh, at least a third of the way completed by now so time is running out and real fast, we pretty much own every single building in the map. And without any warning, the train already reaches Prince George. It almost feels like crossing the prairies is long and boring. And now the train is cutting down its last little run before reaching Vancouver. Delivering the six load were required by the mission to complete. And in almost no time, we have finally crossed an entire nation. The Great Divide of Canada has been met. 
was to do some swamp the expansion to reach some iron and coal to start getting some steel production going on just don't forget even though the uh, cart must reach vancouver it must also be worth 50 million if we want a golden medal and we really just start running dumb trains in the hope of making a little bit of cash and it becomes really dull after a little while just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again at a certain point you even start considering crazy ideas of expansions you maybe didn't really think about before you could maybe try and exploit to make just a little bit more profit and they are always very profitable roads that appear out of nowhere you just start expanding a little bit over here over there in this direction that direction doesn't matter you just try and reach more and more businesses more and more of the houses left that you haven't reached yet and the actual infrastructure becomes an unbearable burden on the economy you're not linking up little passenger trains between little towns like a little kids no you're running massive business with hundreds well maybe not hundreds but dozens of goods that you need to move around you take the raw material from the field and you bring it to the manufacturer and then from there whatever goods finished you bring it to the population center you really try expanding anywhere you can to make a little bit of profit where it's possible and you even reach a certain point where you gain the big monkey brain where you just start spending money frivolously like it's not even yours money anymore it might just be a, a government run business at this point doing such crazy endeavor but you ram through all of it and you make it happen because you know that this little port in Halifax and these two little port in St. Joan can be that extra little dollar that could make the difference on the 50 millions you're making and you just keep buying more and more you just try squeezing more and more and then you extract every single resource you can find because don't forget the ultimate objective is to be reaching a company worth of 50 million but you know every good thing in life has an ending date a best buy date in our case it's reaching 1896 and we're only worth more than 20 million but not quite 50 and we only get the silver medal but hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you might want to consider giving it a silver medal too thanks for watching and see you next time